It's just like we have placed something in our pocket, and and then now we rediscover it after searching all over the houses and couldn't find. True happiness. Do not uh, are not offered by the high high position of the world, by the knowledge that we gain from books of from the society, or from the possession that we have. But true happiness can only come with self-realization, with enlightenment then when we laugh, we truly laugh. And when we cry, we are truly touched. And all our emotions are worked out in a harmonious, natural and perfect way, leaving our body and mind relieved of all burdens and unnecessary pressure which causes a lot of our, um, how to say, un unknown illnesses or many mental disturbances. And then when, after enlightenment, then when we understand something, we truly understand very deep very profound, very uh, satis satisfying. And then we truly know happiness. Even though in life we still encounter a lot of difficulties, a lot of um, undesirable situation, but then Within ourselves, we are unshakable. We might shed tears, but we are not miserable. We are not weighed down by the misery, the sorrow that we encounter. We might laugh very heartily, but we will not be attached to the fleeting happiness which material world offers to us. We enjoy things, but we do not uh, possess, them, possess them. We sympathize with people, but we do not bind them to us. We love everyone without feeling a possessive impose that having to have to bind people around us all the time. This is then the true happiness. Many of us think that to attain the kingdom of God, it takes a very long time, or is this impossible? Only Jesus or Buddha can do it. But if we remember very clearly, in the Bible it is said that the Je Jesus has stated that whatever I do, you can do, and you can do better. And the Buddha say, I am the already achieved. Uh, I have already achieved Buddhahood, and you will achieve Buddhahood. What is this? What is this Buddhahood or the Buddha nature? We can call this is the great intelligence, the great wisdom which inherent within all of us. And by rediscovery of this wisdom, there's nothing we cannot do, no space we cannot traverse, no task is too difficult. And we do things without effort.
We can rescue many people from hell. We can bless the world with our spiritual light, and we can ascend to heaven whenever we wish. And even in our daily life, we will attain true happiness through having realized our wisdom. Our situation in life may change or not change, but still we have very deep happiness within us, which nothing, no situation can shake. We may appear, we may appear to be uh, shaken in some situations, but then within our soul, our heart, there will come forth, will radiate forth a very stable peace, very solid tranquility, which makes us happy and content in every situation. Sometimes in in dealing with our daily affair, we cannot help to feel some frustration or uh, dissatisfaction. But still, if we are enlightened, we have a very different attitude because we know, we know that God's will shall be done. We know that this world, however charming, however real it looks, it is only a shadow of the true world, which is within us, which is only one hair breadth apart. And we can anytime walk back into that reality to console ourselves to verify to ourselves that anything happened in this world is illusionary. And we have a choice not to stay within this dark world, because we do. This morning at uh, brunch time, <laughs> one of my disciples, sit there, sat there with me and was chatting over his experiences. It's nothing much really, you might be surprised <laughs> and disappointed because he talked about hell, not heaven. <laughs> of course he went to heaven other times too and he told me already, but this morning I don't know why he talked about hell. <laughs> it was like this, he uh, went to hell probably out of curiosity to have a look. Probably he was fed up with heaven already since, <laughs> since he has been there many times. <laughs> so since he wanted to have a change, uh, went to hell. Luckily he didn't, went to, he didn't go to a very, very deep and horrible one, just a kind of outskirt of hell-like. So he went there and he saw that the streets were very small and dark, slippery and depressing. And the house is just similar to ours here, but very dull, very dark, very dim and no light. And the sky above, instead of blue and bright like our sky, is dark, is depressing and there's no light in it. The houses are all covered with, uh, how to say, with mosses, right? Rewa, uh, and mosses. Yes. And it's uh, wet and dumb and very depressing. And as soon as he entered there, he felt such a depression, pressure with, in, in his soul that he wanted to cry, but he couldn't even cry. It was such a depression that he could not even cry out 
to relieve himself and the tears will not even fall down. And he just felt like joking without anyone doing anything physically to him, without anyone ever spoken anything, uh, any abusive word to him. He just felt oppressed. And so he walked around there, opened his mouth, wanting to cry, but couldn't even cry out. Now he walked around there all the time, and then he remember the method that I have taught him in such a situation. <laughs> and then, of course, he made use of it, and then he felt better, and he came nearer and nearer to the, uh, the entrance. Uh, be before he came to the entrance, there were, he came to a point where, he, where the road separated into two. One is going up, bright, uh, let's say, wider road and brighter, go up. And the other one, go deeper underneath. Must be into a very, a more, more intensive care hell. Hmm. It's just like hospital. Hell is a kind of hospital to uh, repair some peoples with um, perverted view about life and about heaven and earth and all that, which uh, is contrary to the truth. So there are some intensive care stations in that kind of hospital, which is very, very uh, depressive, a very suffering indeed. And sometimes it could go on a very long time if the person is very sick mentally or psychically. Now when he uh, encountered that uh, crossroad, and then he was very frightened and oppressed within his heart, so he prayed to the master of power. And then he was able to walk toward the lighter path. Otherwise, he was kind of rooted there <laughs> and feeling very, very frightened, very uh, depressed. Without anything happen to him, it is just the atmosphere in that hell that makes people depressed without ever, ever doing anything. It's just like he was asking me why. Ah, so I kind of explained to him I said, because the atmosphere is different from your own, therefore you couldn't bear it. If you go deeper, it would be terrible, probably not easy to come back. Just like uh, we are human beings, and if we happen to go underwater, we could bear it for a while, but still we feel the pressure of the volume of water above and about us, around us. Therefore, we couldn't bear it very long and we'd be suffocated without anything being done to us. Similarly, if a human being of a dignified standard goes to hell, have a look, then of course he will suffer this difference in consequence, in, in, in currents, in a vibratory currency, currents. Therefore, he felt very, very uncomfortable and near dying. If you like mountains are up on you and you couldn't move, you couldn't go, get away from it. This experience I know also sometimes when I have to go there for some reason. <laughs> Maybe shopping <laughs> to see who is a good soul to bring up. Uh, shopping in hell can be very uncomfortable. Mm. But that was not a very deep hell. So now, when he turned to the wider and brighter road, he saw a very big gate. And outside the gate is a different world altogether. Bright, happy, clear, everything is normal and beautiful. Inside the gate is a world of darkness, of depression, 
of suffering. So just walk out of the gate and he be in the light. Of course, he saw many other things, but I don't think I will take up your time for this <laughs> evening because we're not uh, advertising hell tonight. Yes. You can laugh if you want, it doesn't matter. Huh? Express your <laughs> humor. So he walked out into the gate and then into the light. So simple is that. But then he even had to pray to the Master in order to walk out. You would think it's very easy, but it is not. If you go to such places, your feet seem to root <laughs> there. And if we are not very highly virtuous or if we don't have any reliable source of power besides us, it is not easy to get out. That's why most of the people, when they fall into the state of lower consciousness, like the so-called hell, they couldn't help themselves to get out. Even though it's just a door apart, they couldn't go out. And nobody was at the door to guard the door at all. But no one could ever walk out. They didn't think of walking out. The atmosphere was so binding, so uh, confining, that everyone was rooted inside and couldn't get out. Now we feel very depressing when we were there because we are human and we are not used to with such low vibratory currents. Is that right, the correct English? It's okay? Yeah. It's just like the animals, for example, the, the pigs, the pigs, yeah? They are very happy in their uh, den and they are rolling around in fields and all that and they feel happy. But if we were to be in there for even a few minutes, we do not feel content and we would like to walk out. Mm. So there are different levels of consciousness which manifest in different kind of word for different beings to satisfy their subconscious level of understanding. We can re regress for a while, not regressing, just probably go around in a different corner for a while that may be darker than where we stand. That is the lower world of hell and all that. And we could walk into, uh, directly into the light, therefore step up our consciousness. It's all up to us. And if we could not do it ourselves, then we should try to find someone who has experience in such business <laughs> and they will help us. Yes. Enlightenment immediately is no big deal, just a know-how, just like everything else in life. If we know how to operate a very complicated computer, it's very easy. For a layman, it's almost impossible. Immediate enlightenment, since ancient times, people already experienced. More so in this century, because uh, the, the media, the communication system are great, therefore we have all the good news available to mankind at large. Why is it so easy to get enlightenment? It is because our nature is enlightenment. Because we are wisdom, we are great. Therefore, it is said that God made man in his own image. Therefore, it is said that the Buddha and all sentient beings are equal. But the difference is that the Buddha knows it, knows his treasure, knows his wisdom, and can make use of it, and the other sentient beings do not know. 
or not yet, have not yet come to know. So if a sentient being knows these things, then he is immediately uh, merging within his own greatness or the Buddha nature. And then he will realize immediately or sooner or later how great he is, that he and the Father are one, then he is the Buddha. Somebody asked me, what's the difference between a God and a Buddha? Is there any difference? I say yes and no. Mm. Because all things come from God. This is the source of all beings. This is our own nature, the original source before we were born into this physical world. Actually, we were never born. We were never born at all. It's just the different rooms that we have stepped in. Just like the story I have narrated before about our disciple who were first in the dark world and then came out into the light world, which is only one door apart. The Buddha is the God power that's manifested into a shape in order to guide us into the light. Jesus is also the same. He is a manifestation of God power on earth in order to remind us that we can be the same. Jesus and Buddha did not come here to make us worship them or to enjoy our glorification for them. They came here to show us that we can be the same, that we can be connected with God and be great as Buddha and Jesus. And we can walk back into the light where we have come from and not be deluded by this shadow of the real world, but a poor copy of, of the real things. I have made an example of a very beautiful girl, Miss Universe, for example. She would probably stand inside a room somewhere and the light was behind her and her shadow was on, on, the, on the floor. And someone was outside the room just saw only the shadow and not the beautiful girl. Now, if he looked at the shadow, of course, it is kind of tortured and not beautiful. But even then, it probably seems beautiful enough. Maybe the nose was very high and the figure was a little very proportionate, etc. And probably we think, wow, what a beautiful shadow. But it's only a shadow. If we get to know the real girl, we would not marvel or attached to the shadow at all. And we would think, wow, this is truly what it should be. But because we do not step inside to find the real beauty and we think, Ah, the shadow is beautiful, but it's no good. It was twisted here and twisted there. The leg was too long, the head was too big, <laughs> etc. Because our shadows are like that. Our shadows are very poor image of the real things. Therefore, we should, we don't need to change the world because the world is only a shadow of the real thing. If we get to know the real one, then we do not care about the copy, about the shadow. That's how we gain detachment to the world. That's how we will be truly happy, because we discover something precious and real. 
and then nothing of the shadowy world could affect us anymore. Be twisted, be long, uh, or a very funny shape representing uh, the misery and suffering of this world. We would not feel very disturbed because we know it is only a shadow. And as soon as the light was turned out, the shadow is gone because only the real thing is forever there. The real girl is always there, whether the light is on or not on, whether the shadow is there or not. Therefore, God nature, the kingdom of God within, the real world exists all the time, eternally. What is destroyed, only the shadow of it, just like when the light was off, was out, then the shadow of the beautiful girl also disappeared. Therefore, when we say we die or the world will be in, uh, I'll say the end of the world will come and a catastrophe and etc., uh, etc., et we, the practicers of Kuan Yin Method, never worry because we know the real and the eternal world. Therefore, our life is bound to be always in happiness. Even though we apparently feel, uh, no, show some kind of emotion, but that is only the waves on the sea surface. It's not the whole sea. And soon the waves will subside and go back into the sea, all tranquil, all great. Therefore, if we want to find true happiness in life, we should turn inward, walk through that door that separates between the shadowy world and the real world. The door is here. We call that heavenly gate or the wisdom eye or the gate to nirvana whatever you wish. We walk through that gate and we leave everything behind. Everything that is unsatisfactorily, uh, unsatisfactory, everything that is false, illusory, and cause unhappiness. Then we always know what true happiness is. Even if we do not search for the heaven, or even if we do not believe in heaven, at least our life here on earth would be very smooth, content, and happy the way it should be. The world is full of suffering. This is not God's making. It is not the Lord of Karma who makes trouble, as we have learned to know. It is not the law of cause and uh, retribution that make us sow what, uh, reap what we sow. It is our own ignorance of the real world that brings us all kind of unhappiness. We keep chasing the shadow and wanting it to be straight, to be more full, to be more beautiful, to be more proportionate. But it is only a shadow. If we get to know the real person, we care not what the shadow looks like. Is that not so? Similarly, if we know the real world, how beautiful, how eternal, how free of every disaster and suffering, we care not whether this ephemeral drama is uh, going on in, a, in which way? Because we know this is a distorted picture, uh, projection of the, real, of the real and beautiful world. Therefore, whatever it looks like, it doesn't concern us that much. But if we do not know, of course we always attach ourselves to the shadow and wanting is to be this and that and other, which is impossible. 
the shadow may be straight, may be uh, bended, may be twisted, may be long, may be short. 